Hi, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna start talking about circuit analysis, uh, which is typically a first course in electrical engineering, and it is usually taught in the first or second semester of the sophomore year uh, of an electrical engineering curriculum. Uh, so the basic goal is to uh, familiarize students with uh, how to analyze linear circuits, which involve resistors, capacitors, inductors, and possibly uh, they may include operational amplifiers. Now that depends on each university or college and how they prefer to space out their uh, curriculum and courses. Uh, but in this lecture series, we're going to include uh, what is listed here in the under goals, which I'm going to show you in a second. So we're going to be talking about voltages across and currents through linear circuits. Uh, and again, these linear circuits involve, uh, we're going to be talking about what exactly constitutes a linear circuit. But for now, uh, these involve uh, circuits containing resistors, inductors, capacitors. And um, ba after that, we're going to be uh, looking at some properties that follow uh, or uh, are a result of linear circuit theory. And we're going to see that uh, they simplify our lives a lot and uh, save us some computation time and uh, set up time for setting up the circuit and uh, writing uh, algebraic equations for them. Then we're going to be looking at uh, op-amp analysis. Op-amp stands for operational amplifier. And uh, these are very common elements used in typically low frequency design. Uh, you don't typically use them for uh, higher than a couple hundred or a couple megahertz and above. You don't really go, uh, as far as I've seen, you don't go beyond that because the, something called the gain uh, starts to drop and there's a, uh, a lot of parasitics at a certain point. And basically, uh, if you go, for example, into RF and uh, microwave design, you would uh, not use op-amps for that. So uh, for power circuits, for uh, error amplifiers, for low dropout regulators, they could be used for basically anything uh, in a couple, uh, maybe a couple hundred kilohertz, be a reasonable range or anything below that. Uh, so basically op-amps are very important for, uh, let's say DC, uh, or low frequency circuit analysis and design. And uh, after that, we're gonna be looking at first order and second order circuits. And the reason they're called first order and second order, uh, it refers to their, uh, the differential equations that describe them. So you have a first order equation or a second order uh, differential equation. And this refers to the, the, the degree of the differential. So the first derivative an equation, a differential equation with only one derivative in it would be a first order equation. A differential equation with two derivatives would be a second order uh, differential equation. We're going to see where and why that comes about and I may uh, create some primer videos uh, so that you don't have to go through a differential equation list and try to or get lost in a long series of uh, lectures not knowing what's more important and what's not as important for this lecture series. So I'll go through some examples and go through some primers uh, so that we can focus our efforts in what is uh, necessary for our lecture series. Then we're going to be looking at, uh, these are not necessarily in order, some of these, so we're going to be looking at sinusoidal steady state and frequency response. So sinusoidal, sinusoidal steady state is the idea that you want to look at phasors, which are uh, certain quantities that simplify the uh, math needed to analyze these circuits. And the steady state refers to, um, so we have something called transient and steady state analysis. For transients, that's for example, when you have a say RLC circuit and you have a switch and you have a voltage source and you turn the switch on and off and on and off in a certain manner. And um, the transient in this case refers to the voltage or current waveform, which can be abruptly changing because you have a, for example, if you have an inductor, we're gonna see later on that if you have an inductor, if you, uh, what I like to do is to maintain the current as steady as possible, and if you, um, if you suddenly switch, uh, turn the switch on or off, what's going to happen is that you're disrupting that current, 
And so to be able to maintain a certain amount of current, uh, the electromagnetic uh, laws that govern the behavior of an inductor require to create a very sudden spike in voltage, a very something called kickback. It's going to uh, create a spike in voltage and basically damage uh, particular parts of your circuit. Uh, that's why, for example, they, uh, we can design protection circuits to protect against uh, such spikes because uh, for example, you don't want a user to have to worry about, okay, here's a black box, uh, here's a switch, I don't want to have to worry about uh, what's going to happen if I turn this on or off right now or in a certain manner. So these are certain things that we're going to be looking at and certain design uh, considerations. At some point, we're going to be looking at applications and we will see some of these pointers. So either way, that's transients is the idea that uh, how does your current or voltage change as you have sudden changes in the circuit, whether it's at the input or you're actually just switching it in a certain way. And then the steady state analysis is where we have uh, something happens, you turn something on or off or switch it in, uh, switch on or off. And basically you look at the output waveform, whether it's current or voltage, and steady state means that some time, certain, certain amount of time has passed, whether that's a few time constants or uh, a long time as t approaches infinity if you want to speak mathematically and that basically kind of simplifies analysis if you look at steady state because you're looking at singular frequencies so uh, anyways I won't spend too much time on that right now basically I'm just trying to introduce you give you a high level view of what's going to be going on uh, and once we cover the fundamentals the DC analysis the AC analysis of these circuits and uh, RLC circuits uh, we're going to be looking at more advanced topics which require differential equations. Uh, so Laplace transforms, which is a way to analyze uh, transient uh, as well as uh, steady state analysis. Uh, it basically encapsulates both initial conditions to a circuit and uh, what's going to be happening later on. You're going to encompass all that into one operation, which is the Laplace transform. And the inverse Laplace transform, which we will see how to, uh, what the concept is and how to, it applies to circuits and why it's so useful. Then it is the Fourier transform, which is sort of a special case of the Laplace transform, sort of the steady state version of Laplace transform. You'll also see that as well. And then there's the two port networks uh, part, which is very important in the sense that um, if you have a certain system, a certain composed of several circuits or one circuit, uh, if you want to cascade them, you want to be able to quickly and uh, efficiently come up with the relations of the input and the output as well as the effects of the input to the output and the effects of the output to the input. And there's certain network parameters, Z parameters, Y parameters, hybrid parameters, S parameters, we're not going to get into that's more of an RF microwave concept and requires some understanding of reflections and uh, some of the electromagnetics that I'm hoping to be able to do at some later point once I make good progress on in this. Uh, uh, lecture series. Uh, we will get into that later, but for now we're going to uh, kind of start from the ground up and uh, do what's typically done at universities and start with a basic circuit course. So once you get these concepts down, you're pretty much good to go on in, in the next uh, in the next level course, which could be BJT based amplifier design, bipolar junction transistors, uh, MOSFETs, um, metal oxide uh, semiconductor field effect transistors. So. And those are again some of the video series that I'll be working on later on once I finish this one or once I make significant progress in this one. And keep in mind I do have a full-time job and other responsibilities so I'm going to try to do this as much as I can but uh, one at a time is what I'm going to be focusing on. So now let's talk about prerequisites. So it's essential that you're very comfortable with algebra. You shouldn't have to think too much about it. You should be able to solve systems of linear equations pretty quickly, uh, be able to manipulate equations quickly. Uh, trigonometry is also very essential in electrical engineering overall. Uh, whatever sub-discipline you work on, you work in, you're going to be seeing trigonometry and algebra, absolutely. Um, then there's calculus. Uh, you're going to need to know differential and integral calculus and the uh, differentiation and integration of um, basic signals such as exponential, uh, such as sinusoid, sinusoids, uh, sines, cosines, and whatnot. Uh, complex numbers are very important in the sense that uh, once you work with that trigonometry, you don't want to be working with sines and cosines all the time when you have 
uh, certain sources or when you have inductors, capacitors, and they all have different voltages and currents where they have different phases. You don't want to be working with arguments in a sine function, for example, uh, say, I don't know, say uh, 2 pi t plus 30 degrees. It's just an example. Uh, you don't want to, when you're adding that or subtracting that or multiplying that with another sinusoid, you don't want to have to keep using uh, trigonometric identities. So what you do is turn your quantities to real and imaginary parts, which are complex numbers. And what you do is you do the algebraic manipulations, the complex algebra. Uh, and what you do then is, once you finish the complex algebra, whatever the uh, manipulations are, addition, subtraction, multiplication, conjugation, once you get done with that, you basically convert the uh, the quantity back into either sinusoid or polar form or exponential form, and depending on what the problem asks you, and uh, you should be comfortable going between uh, said uh, forms, and that's gonna be of enormous help because it's efficient, it saves us time, and um, it's just a very useful concept to know. Then there's linear algebra, and the squiggly lines mean just uh, you don't have to know all of it, just be proficient in the basics of it. Linear algebra, you should be able to do matrix manipulations, be able to uh, determine the dimension after like multiplication, for example, be able to uh, so ma multiply matrices, add matrices, subtract matrices, invert matrices, and some of the um, fundamental properties of uh, linear algebra. Differential equations is also, it's actually, it's sort of essential in the sense that as it applies to first order and second order circuits, you should be comfortable with uh, knowing how to set up the circuits and how to uh, come up with the solutions to the circuits or be able to guess at least what form the solution will take. Uh, so these are the basics here and uh, before it becomes too long I'll go ahead and end it here and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.